Well, here we are. Another week of, of uh, distance learning. Um, it was great to see some of you yesterday. I was at school yesterday handing out some masks and I saw a few of you. It was, a, it was nice to see you guys. Uh, but looks like we're going to be out for the, for the rest of the year doing our distance learning. So I hope all of you are keeping up with your core classes. And once you've got those things done, hey, my class is fun. So come, uh, come on back and, and take a look at the, what I've got posted uh, on, my, uh, on my lesson plans and uh, see what you have at home as, uh, as far as materials to be making some art and have a good time making some art. But let's uh, just hang in there. Uh, make sure that you're, you're uh, keeping up with, with, um, with your math and, and social studies and all the other classes and then um, come on over to my, uh, my page and, and have uh, some fun making some art. So I've given you a, a, a few assignments already, uh, uh, doing a, a portrait and um, doing something based upon a, um, a concept map um, on uh, the uh, coronavirus, so, or COVID-19. And uh, I've actually done this. Uh, the other day, I, I started off just by doing a, a little demonstration on how to do uh, human figures and, and drawing the hand, and, and then just sort of, um, just like the, the, your concept mapping works, uh, I, I sort of started looking at the, the left hand. I thought, well, I need a right hand. And when I saw the two hands together, it looks like hands washing each other. And I thought, hey, that's what we've been doing a whole lot of, is washing our hands lately because of the coronavirus. So all of these, the way artists work in the creative process, it's this of, of making, finding these connections and building upon on things. And as I've said many, many times before, an artist is never done. When he finishes his work of art, it's part of a body of work and, he, and it leads into, into the next. So, um, and anyway, so this is, um, I'm pretty much uh, finished with this. I've got a few more finishing touches to put in and, and do it, but this would be my uh, coronavirus uh, work of art that I've done. Now, I'm sure that most, most of you, if not all of you, uh, are at home and you don't have access to a canvas like I do and, and all of the different paints and stuff, but you've, there's uh, certainly, at, at the very least, you've got something, some sort of paper to make a mark on and something to make a mark with. Uh, a pencil and some of you probably have have more than that this is a great opportunity for you to, to uh, work on your appropriation skills find things you don't necessarily have to be drawing and painting you you might have something you can make a sculpture out of there's lots of stuff uh, hanging around the house just make sure you get permission before you use it so anyway this is um for the most part done i've got a few more touches to do on it but also in addition to uh, well the portrait that assignment that i gave you uh, a, a few weeks ago uh, it certainly is here with my little self-portrait of myself staring out the window here. Uh, but not only is this a, an example of a portrait, we have a still life over here. We have landscape in the background. And then you could even say that this is uh, kind of surreal because of the, um, the uh, coronavirus uh, of viruses uh, floating around. But also, uh, this semester, uh, we also have been emphasizing linear perspective and other types of perspective a lot. And if you look on here, uh, the, the way I have my bricks and the windows and everything, uh, that you can look and see where these lines are lining up and the horizon line right here, you can see that these lines that are going this direction are intersecting about right there. Now, the ones that are going this direction, would, uh, the horizon line would come way out over here and they would go out over that way, off, off the, the side over there. So, but they also have a vanishing point right there. So I've got, this is, would be an example of two-point linear perspective, but also the way you create the illusion of depth and space is through the use of overlapping, and there's lots of examples of overlapping. We've got the, we've got the um, basket of tomatoes here overlapping the, the bottle and the, and the toilet paper there overlapping the basket and, and, and the coronavirus overlapping the, one of the bars and then the bars overlapping some other coronaviruses farther back. And so there's lots of examples of, of overlapping. And then there's also um, what we talked about is atmospheric perspective how things are sharper and, and higher contrast the closer they are and then the farther they get back if you look at the horizon line they're really sort of gray very low contrast and, and not the very sharp edges they're, they're kind of blurred so uh, that's also an example of atmospheric perspective so we've got three different types of perspective at work here we've got the uh, atmospheric perspective we've got overlapping and then the two-point linear perspective that we we have um, in the uh, architecture here. So um, let's see, what else might be interesting to, to point out with this? 
Uh, you, it, value, the use of value and creating the illusion of light. We even have some cast shadows here and things like that. So value is, is plays an important role uh, in this piece as well. So anyway, have fun. You know, take care of your all your other classes, then then come to, to my class and see what I've been suggesting and um, have a good time making some art. The uh, coronavirus floating around.